Blue Skin Disorder You may look like you're auditioning for the latest Avatar movie, but having a blue skin condition is about your body struggling to get enough oxygen. Scientifically known as methemoglobinemia, this rare disorder gives the skin a blue or purple hue due to blood having a high level of methemoglobin a form of hemoglobin that isn't great at carrying oxygen. Your blood cells are your body's delivery trucks, zipping around and bringing oxygen to your body parts. Usually, these trucks are fast couriers, but with methemoglobinemia, some turn into sluggish, broken-down vehicles. They can't get the oxygen where it needs to go. This lack of oxygen delivery makes parts of your body turn blue, resulting in that distinctive Smurf-like complexion. Blue skin disorder can either be inherited, handed down like a family heirloom nobody asked for, or it can be acquired from exposure to certain chemicals and medications. Let's say your great-great-grandparent was a carrier, and now, generations later, you've inherited the family's dubious blue gene. It's never fun when you're rocking the blue skin look. Aside from someone asking you directions to the Smurf village, you might feel dizzy, fatigued, or out of breath. It's as if you've just run a marathon without the glory of crossing a finish line. And in extreme cases, this lack of oxygen can be life-threatening, making it more than just a unique cosmetic look. Situs Inversus You're in the Harry Potter universe, and someone suddenly casts Situs Inversus on you. The spell rearranges your organs, moving them around and switching places with their counterparts on the other side of the body. But the twist is that this isn't a fictional phenomenon, but a real-life condition. Situs inversus is a condition where your organs switch places, as if you're looking at a mirror image of yourself. So the organs that are usually on the left now switch places with the ones on the right. This condition results from a genetic twist that affects more than 100 genes linked to the sidedness of your organs. Due to how rare this mutation is, it affects only 1 out of 10,000 people. Some might not even know they have it. If you have this condition, you can go about your regular days not knowing that your organs played the old switcheroo. It's only when you get a medical checkup and make the doctor wonder why he can't hear your heartbeat that you realize that they have this rare condition. That's why you should be worried about the doctor making a mistake with your organs during surgery. Imagine doctor taking out a healthy kidney instead of a sick one out of your body. The interesting part about this condition is that it doesn't mess with how your body works. The organs work normally, although you may be more prone to a few heart and lung related problems. Hypermobile Joints Hypermobile joints are those overachievers at your office who make everyone else look like they're slacking off by comparison. They don't just stick to the job description because they go above and beyond in the most spectacular and occasionally bizarre ways possible. With hypermobile joints, you're like a human Swiss army knife of flexibility. Need to scratch your back? Those itchy spots in hard to reach places are a breeze for you, while others envy your flexible abilities. This super flexibility is all thanks to your connective tissues being more elastic than usual. While everyone else is stretching to touch their toes, you're casually folding yourself into origami shapes at yoga class, becoming the star pupil with moves that would make a rubber band jealous. But there's a catch before you start planning your career as a circus performer. Being hypermobile isn't always a good thing. It's like having a superpower with a side order of sprains and the occasional joint dislocation. Your joints might feel like rubber bands that have been pulled too far one too many times. They will eventually snap back when you least expect it. So while you might be tempted to show off your human pretzel skills at every opportunity, remember that it's not always a good idea to twist yourself into a knot just because you can do it. Vardenberg Syndrome Let's say your printer becomes a frustrated painter by throwing around colors like it's at a party. Instead of a normal photo, you get an abstract piece of art with mismatched colors and patterns. That's what happens when you have Vardenberg Syndrome. This condition turns your DNA into an artist who's had a few too many cups of coffee and spilled paint everywhere. Instead of cleaning up and starting over, your body decides this chaotic canvas is the new masterpiece. If you have Vardenberg syndrome, you'll have some distinctive features. Your hair might have a stylish white streak or even be completely white. Your skin might be paler than usual, making you look like the star in the next vampire movie. Even certain races can have eyes as blue as the ocean, even though they're genetically not known to have them. Vardenberg syndrome takes the genetic mix-up to a whole new level by getting your hair color and ear genes all tangled up. Your ear genes are convinced they should be hair color genes instead. 
As a result, you get hearing problems because your ear genes are now in an existential crisis. Even though this genetic game of Twister can lead to some unique features, it's usually not a significant health issue. Hearing problems will be your biggest concern, but it's nothing that hearing aids can't fix. Double Row of Eyelashes whether nature made a mistake or gave you a bonus feature, having a double row of eyelashes can give your eyes that extra flair in a game of peekaboo. Known as dystochiasis, this condition gives you two rows of eyelashes on each eyelid instead of the usual single row that the rest of us mere mortals have. You're waking up every day looking like you've already applied a layer of mascara and eyeliner. There's no need for a makeup artist when you have a built-in beauty expert. This genetic trait results from having more oil-producing glands in your eyelids. The extra row sprouts from those glands, giving you eyelashes that make you a mascara company's dream customer. They might even consider naming a product line after you. But before you start planning your red carpet debut, let's talk about the bad side. While having a double row of eyelashes sounds like a ticket to the A-list, this feature can be a pain. Sure, they look fantastic, giving you that effortless, I woke up like this look, but remember, eyelashes are meant to be shields for your eyes, not just accessories. These extra lashes often grow in different directions from your regular ones, which can be very uncomfortable, as if you were having a tiny feather perpetually tickling your eyeballs. Your eyes scream for mercy as you're blinking, leading to irritation or potential damage to your eyes. Cat Eye Syndrome your genetic blueprint is like a complex recipe book that dictates how your body is supposed to develop. But when you have cat eye syndrome, or CES, also known as schmid fracaro syndrome, there's a typo in this recipe book, specifically on chromosome 22. In CES, the issue in this chromosome can cause unique features. The most striking is the appearance of the eyes, which would resemble a cat's eyes because of the vertical slit in the iris, the colorful part of your eyes. This gives you a feline-like look, making you think you're probably 25% cat from your mother's side. Don't get your hopes up about catching mice or leaping gracefully from high places. Your newfound cat eyes don't come with mutant powers that will make you a feline-themed superhero. But CES can also affect other parts of your body, like a mixtape of genetic surprises. Aside from your distinctive eyes, you might have heart, kidney, and spinal abnormalities. Sometimes the way your ears and intestines work is affected. It varies from person to person, but the eyes are usually the common factors. Now, while you might look ready to join a superhero team, there's no cure for CES, because this is a genetic disorder that's permanent. You can manage the symptoms with various treatments tailored to the specific parts of your body affected. Uncombable Hair Syndrome if you thought Medusa always had a bad hair day with those snakes slithering around, wait until you hear about Uncombable Hair Syndrome, or UHS. It sounds like a kid might make an excuse for not brushing their hair, but it's an actual condition. Medusa's hair might turn you to stone, but UHS will leave you scratching your head in disbelief. Uncombable hair syndrome is a rare genetic condition that usually starts in childhood. Instead of winning the hair lottery, you draw the card that reads, Congratulations, your hair will now defy all laws of physics and combs. If you have UHS, your hair plays by its own rules. It defies gravity, stands up, is dry and frizzy, and seems in a never-ending state of static shock. It's like being electrocuted and having your hair frozen in that moment of wild chaos. This genetic issue involves mutations in three genes that are supposed to help your hair behave as you grow up. Instead, these genes decide to go rogue. The result is your hair strands shaped like little hearts instead of the typical round shape. These heart-shaped strands give UHS hair an unusual shine. It's like you made a deal with the devil, where you get the shiniest hair in exchange for never being able to comb it. But the silver lining is that UHS isn't harmful. It gets more manageable with age, like a rebellious teenager eventually settling down. Morton's Toe Let's say your toes are the cast in a tiny drama, each playing a unique role. Your big toe should typically be the shoe-stopping star, basking in the limelight due to its size and prominence, but in a plot twist worthy of a Mexican telenovela, Morton's toe flips the script, casting your second toe right next to the big toe as the unexpected leading character. This ambitious second toe, longer than the big one, hijacks the show and takes over as the main toe, leaving the big toe a supporting cast member. While Morton's toe isn't the norm, it's not surprisingly rare because many people have it. 
The condition arises from how your metatarsals, the long bones in your foot, are arranged, giving your second toe time to shine. Don't think your toes are just there for show because they play an important role in your daily life. With Morton's toe, the longer second toe can redistribute the pressure across your foot as you walk or stand. This can lead to a series of unwelcome guest stars, namely calluses, pain in the ball of your foot, and other pressure-related problems. It's like your foot decided to throw a surprise party but forgot to invite comfort. Shoe shopping, already a challenging quest, becomes tougher with Morton's toe. But here's a soulful good news. Historically, people with longer second toes were considered leaders, even royalty. Ancient civilizations thought guys were destined for greatness because of their natural leadership skills. Supernumerary Nipple Taking your shirt off at a pool party will always be an awkward moment if you have a supernumerary nipple. It's that weird addition to that human body that nature can throw in the mix, giving you extra nipples. You can find it somewhere near your regular nipples, maybe on your chest, armpit, or even lower abdomen. It's the bonus feature you never asked for, making you the unwilling star of your summer beach trips. Medically known as polythelia, a supernumerary nipple develops during fetal development when extra tissue forms along the milk lines. These lines are like a blueprint that dictates where your regular nipples should be, but occasionally they go a bit overboard and throw in an extra nipple or two for good measure. It's like your milk lines decided to give you backup nipples in case something happens to your primary ones. But those extra nipples usually don't look or function like your regular ones. They can look like tiny bumps or maybe fully formed nipples. You might not even notice they're there unless you accidentally scratched your armpit and realized something was off. Others are probably more aware of their unique anatomy, making it hard to find a bra that can fit three or more nipples. If you have supernumerary nipples, you don't have to worry about them suddenly squirting milk, making it look like you're sweating through your shirt. These nipples aren't usually connected to mammary glands, the parts of your body that produce milk. This means that they're more like decorative accessories. Segmental Heterochromia Having segmental heterochromia is like your eyes deciding to pull a printer error mid-job by running out of ink for one color and improvising with whatever's left in the cartridge. As a result, your iris, that colorful part of your eye, sporting a patch of blue amidst a sea of brown or a speck of hazel in an otherwise green eye. It's like your eyeball is working a second job as a painter's canvas, becoming a bit more colorful than it's supposed to be. This genetic phenomenon happens when melanin, the eye's pigment producer, plays mix and match, creating a mini rainbow in your eyeball. It could be there from birth, gifted to you by your genes, like winning the eye color lottery. Alternatively, it might appear after an eye injury. On top of that, you're part of an elite club because less than 1% of the global population has this iconic look. However, having segmental heterochromia doesn't come with perks because it's purely decorative. It doesn't turn your eyes into binoculars capable of embarrassing any iPhone with its zooming prowess. You don't get night vision abilities either. Of course, there are also no drawbacks. Going to the doctor for eye drops is unnecessary unless an injury makes your eyes more colorful. Macrodactyly Your pinky suddenly woke up wanting to be bigger than the other fingers because it's tired of getting bullied by the rest of the hand. It went to the gym, loaded up on protein, and bulked up to look like the finger version of John Cena. That's essentially what macrodactyly does for you. This condition happens because of an abnormal growth of tissues in the bone, muscles, and skin of the affected finger. It's like nature hit the zoom button on that one finger or toe, turning it more significant than the rest. This can happen from birth because of genetics or a cell mutation. So if you have a massive finger, you can pull out the it runs in the family card. This party of overgrown cells in your finger isn't just about bad aesthetics that will make it hard to find a glove that would fit. Bigger fingers can cause problems beyond mere inconvenience because they affect how your hand or foot functions. If a swollen finger is already uncomfortable enough to write with, imagine how much harder it would be to do that with a pinky the size of a New York hot dog. The bright side is an enlarged middle finger will make you the best at flipping the bird on people you're not fond of. Hitchhiker's Thumb It's rush hour in New York City and you're standing on the curb, raising your thumb to catch a cab. But here comes a guy extending his thumb and bending it backward, catching the taxi driver's attention. These guys possess what we call a hitchhiker's thumb. But don't be fooled because this thumb isn't a magical ride-hailing tool. It's not a built-in Uber app. 
flashing your bendy thumb at passing cars on the highway won't make them screech to a halt and offer you a lift. Instead, it's just a super flexible thumb, capable of bending back like it's trying to point to your elbow. Hitchhiker's thumb is what scientists call a recessive trait. This means it's as rare as finding a cab in the rain on a Friday night. Even if your family tree is full of straight thumb normies, you could be born with it. Conversely, having two bendy thumbed parents doesn't guarantee you'll inherit this party trick. Some historians and evolutionary biologists once thought that having a hitchhiker's thumb might have given ancient humans a grip advantage when wielding tools or climbing trees. Today, however, this thumb flexibility doesn't grant any significant survival perks unless you count being the undefeated thumb wrestling champion at family gatherings as crucial. Ultimately, Hitchhiker's Thumb is less of an evolutionary marvel and more of a weird conversation starter.